Hi, welcome to Nuclear Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about different types of nuclear equations. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what is a nuclear equation, the definition of natural transmutation, the definition of artificial transmutation, artificial transmutation with a charged particle, artificial transmutation with a neutral particle, and finally some practice problems with transmutation. So what is a nuclear equation? Nuclear reactions can be represented by expressions very similar to chemical equations. The similarities between nuclear and chemical equations. They're both going to have reactants and they're both going to have products. When we look at a nuclear and chemical equation, mass and charge are both conserved. So here's an example. A chemical equation like magnesium plus diatomic oxygen will produce magnesium oxide. A nuclear equation, francium-220, will decompose into an alpha particle and acetine-216. We see reactants here, we see products here, we see that things are balanced. There are some differences between nuclear and chemical reactions. In a nuclear reaction, it's only going to occur within the nucleus. It's going to involve primarily protons and neutrons, and it only releases energy, and typically an immense amount of energy. Chemical reactions, on the other hand, occur outside the nucleus. They involve primarily valence electrons, which we know are the electrons in the outermost shell, and chemical reactions can either release or absorb energy depending on the compounds involved. Let's talk specifically about natural transmutation. Alpha, beta, and positron emission of unstable nuclei that occurs naturally without any outside intervention. So no outside forces are forcing this reaction to occur. When attempting to recognize a natural transmutation, look for a single nucleus undergoing decay. So in this example of thorium-232, we can see that thorium is a pretty heavy element here. It's got a very large mass number, it's got a very large atomic number, and we have the element symbol. With this is a decay reaction because we only have one reactant and more than one product here. When this undergoes alpha decay, it's going to form radium-228. And we can see that this is a balanced reaction. I have 232 over here. 4 plus 228 is going to give me 232. 2 plus 88 is going to give me 90. And those all match. What I want you to do right now is stop, pause the video, solve for x below, and see how you do. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Let's look at our first one here. We have iron 53 undergoing positron decay, and we're solving for x. Over here, we have a mass number of 53, so that means because this is 0 and this whole thing has to equal 53, our mass number for x also has to be 53. Our atomic number over here is 26. So 1 plus some other number must equal 26. So that means the atomic number here has to be 25. So the element with a mass number of 53 and an atomic number of 25 is going to be manganese. So if I rewrite this, it's going to be 53, 25, manganese, the correct symbol here. Let's look at the next one. I have potassium-85 undergoing some type of decay to form rubidium-85. So what is this particle? Well, my mass number is 85, and my mass number over here is 85. So that means my mass number for this particle has got to be 0. My atomic number is 36. My atomic number for rubidium is 37. So that means that this particle down here has to have a negative 1 because 37 take away 1 will give me 36. And if you look at table O of your reference table, you know that the particle with a mass number of 0 and a charge of minus 1 is a beta particle. Let's look at the last one. I'm trying to find my initial element that's undergoing decay. When it undergoes decay, it's going to form an alpha particle and uranium-235. So 235 plus 4 is going to give me 239. 
92 plus 2 gives me 94. So that means that this has got to be 239.94, and that is plutonium, P-U. So P-U for plutonium. Now let's talk about the definition of artificial transmutation. In the right environment, it is possible to transform one element into another. This is accomplished by smashing a particle into a nucleus, resulting in a change in the nucleus, which produces a different element. Such reactions must occur at extremely high speeds. Such speeds are achieved using particle accelerators, like the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, as we see right here. So what do we mean by smashing particles together? Well, let's say our nucleus is traveling in one direction. And let's say our particle is traveling in the opposite direction. What we're trying to do here is have these two particles, which are traveling in opposite directions, suddenly smash together and produce new particles. So let me show you that one more time. We have a target nucleus going in one direction. We have a particle going in the opposite direction. What we want to do is have those two particles hit each other, smash apart, and form a new element. So let's talk first about artificial transmutation with a charged particle. One type of artificial transmutation involves the collision of a charged particle with a target nucleus. If, for example, protons or alpha particles are accelerated with enough energy, they can overcome the repulsive positive-positive forces they experience when approaching the target particle. So, for example, here we have an alpha particle. That is my charged particle here. Here we have our target nucleus, which is nitrogen-14. If these two particles collide together, there is the potential to form oxygen-17 and one proton, which we know is the same thing as a hydrogen nucleus. Alpha particles are positively charged particles. The target nucleus is nitrogen-14. The same thing can happen with beta particles. So beta particles are negatively charged particles that are also used to smash target nuclei and produce new elements. So for example, we have argon-37 colliding with this beta particle right here and forming chlorine-37. The target nucleus is argon-37. Now let's talk about artificial transmutation with a neutral particle. Because the neutron does not possess a charge, it is not repelled by the target nucleus. So here we have sulfur-32 being bombarded by a neutron to produce phosphorus-32 and a proton. Other small nuclei, such as carbon-12 and nitrogen-15, can also be used to bombard heavier nuclei. So here we have californium-249 being bombarded with nitrogen-15. We form dubnium-260 and four neutrons. So this four here is like a coefficient. So it's representing four neutrons that are released from this reaction, which is very possible. When attempting to recognize an artificial transmutation, look for two reactants, a fast-moving or high-energy particle and the target material. So now what I'd like to do is a little bit of practice. So please stop, take a moment to pause the video, read through the following four Regents Chemistry problems that were on previous exams, and answer the questions. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Which balanced equation represents a spontaneous radioactive decay? The key word here is decay. We know that one and three are going to be out because those are chemical reactions, which leaves us with two and four, which look most like nuclear reactions. Two though is artificial transmutation because we have a target nucleus and a particle. The answer here would be four because we have carbon-14 undergoing spontaneous decay, we have nothing else over here, forming nitrogen-14 and releasing a beta particle. So the answer to this question is four. Which equation represents spontaneous transmutation? Pretty much the same type of question as we saw up here. Remember spontaneous here is going to mean a decay reaction. So if we look at this, again, one and two are chemical reactions, so those are out. Three is out because we have 
plutonium-239 being bombarded with multiple neutrons, forming americium-241 and releasing a beta particle. But the correct answer here, again, is 4, where we have calcium-37 undergoing decay to form potassium-37 and a positron. Which term identifies a type of nuclear reaction? Transmutation is our answer for this one because we know that we have artificial and natural transmutation. Neutralization goes more with acid-base reactions. Deposition talks about phase change going from a gas to a solid. And reduction goes along with redox. The final question is given the reaction aluminum 27 plus an alpha particle yields X in one neutron. Which particle is represented by X? So we are solving for X right here. Well, we know that 27 plus 4 gives us 31. 13 plus 2 gives us 15. The total mass over here is going to be 31. So 31 take away 1 gives me 30. The total bottom number is going to equal 15. And we have a 0 right here, which means my atomic number is going to be 15. So when I look at my answers, number 1 is out because the atomic number is 12. 2 is out because the atomic number is 13. 3 and 4 both have the same mass numbers as our x, but we need this one right here. Phosphorus 30 with an atomic number of 15, which matches up with the element symbol of phosphorus. So what did you learn in this tutorial? We went over what is a nuclear equation. We talked about the definition of natural transmutation. We talked about the definition of artificial transmutation. We looked at artificial transmutation with a charged particle, artificial transmutation with a neutral particle, and finally did some practice problems at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.